And joining me now is Michigan Congressman Mike Rogers, Chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, also a former FBI agent. Uh, thank you very much, Congressman. Thanks for being with us. What is the significance Absolutely. and what do we know about the success of this? Because there had been prior attempts, all failures, but this one seems to have worked. Uh, it seems to have worked according to plan and, and maybe even worked a little bit beyond what uh, we expected and, and maybe even what the North Koreans expected. Uh, and this puts them clearly on a path. You know, there's that three-legged stool of, of trying to get a nuclear weapon that you can deliver someplace and detonate. And, and the missile portion of that is a very important portion of that. So this was a very serious, very provocative step, certainly in violation of UN Resolution 1718 and 1874. Uh, and this is a big moment for the international community, and I would spe specify China, about their ability to step up and engage uh, and change the mind of North Korea on its pursuit of a nuclear weapon program that can weaponize it, put it on the top of a missile, and fire it someplace. Uh, uh, how concerned are we right now about a nuclear test, another nuclear test by the, by the North Koreans? <laughs> They have uh, earlier said that they would do this, and we thought maybe that they would have done this uh, several months ago. Uh, so this is clearly something I think that they're going to try to show the, uh, the continued success of their program. So it would not surprise me that they would have yet another nuclear test. Uh, and again, this is them trying to move in that direction to say that they are a nuclear-capable nation. Uh, and that's you know, troubling, obviously, for a, for a whole host of reasons. And one thing about this, Andrew, I think is so important. This has been this, this really a, a couple of of, uh, of administrations. Three, the last three different administrations have had a hard time struggling to, to get this program under control, and it's advancing and advancing quickly now. I think this is the sign that we need to change our policy a little bit on how we deal with uh, a North Korea that is absolutely defiant of the international community and trying to get a nuclear capable program that could de deliver a nuclear missile, maybe even as far as to the United States. What more can we do? There, we have certain constraints, obvious constraints, the veto right. threats of, of North Korea's ally uh, in, in the United Nations Security Council. Can we sanction them more? Can we do anything unilaterally? Well, I, I, that's where we start. I think we need to have stronger bilateral relationships and harder and tougher and more candid conversations with China when it comes to North Korea. If there is a nation that could step in and change the direction of this program uh, around the world, China would be one of them. And think about the sanctions. We have, if you think about it, North, North Korea is a st literally a starving nation. But they made the calculation that despite the other sanctions, despite the other activities, they were going to pursue this nuclear weapon program when literally they have countrymen who are starving to death. Um, that is a hard calculation to change. And that's why we have, need to, I think, elevate the discussions with China in a bilateral way about North Korea, the one country that can really make a difference there. Uh, I'd start there uh, and move forward from there. Now, I know you're just back from the Persian Gulf, and uh, you have a keen interest in what's happening in Syria. We've taken this step toward recognition behind our allies and to some criticism. The rebel forces are telling our colleague Richard Engel that uh, too little too late. And in fact, the terror designation of al-Nusra Front and, and some of the other groups there is counterproductive because they are the best fighters. How do we, what is your take on how we yeah. are trying to find a middle ground here? Yeah, uh, I, there is this, this notion we should have uh, we should have participated at the table in discussions. I'm not talking about militarily much earlier. That's very clear from our Arab partners in the region, and they're frustrated with us as well. But here's the and here's been the issue. So the best funded, best equipped. Uh, and, and best capable fighters have been from the El Nusra Front or other extremist groups. So they have globbed on to these uh, opposition groups uh, and been a very effective tool and very effective units for them in fighting. And that has been a problem. So you, we have seen over time that the proliferation of these groups across a whole segment of opposition groups that six months ago we would have said had no extremists in them. That's the huge problem that we're facing. So it's a little bit of catch up today to, to say that the El Nusra Front is a terrorist organization. I'm glad uh, that we're, we're there. Uh, rec path to recognition to try to get them to a better place about not using these extremist groups. Good idea. But we are playing catch up. And I think we need to be a little more aggressive uh, and have more aggressive conversations with all our Arab League partners uh, as we move forward. And again, it was very clear coming back from the Bahrain uh, Security Conference in the region that we've got some, we've got some real issues there to make 
wake up, we be in the United States, to try to convince these countries we're serious about Assad leaving and then a stable government to replace him. Congressman Mike Rogers, the intelligence chair, thank you very much. Thank